He's not alone. That's Blade. Look at him. He's obviously not all there. Dementia or some such. I've, I've seen it before. And? You saw him walking through the woods like he was taking a Sunday afternoon stroll. Not a care in the world. He's right. About? How's he managed to survive without some poor fucker looking out for him? Not a scratch on him. He walked right up to us without even a second thought. Thick body warmer, boots. Nice boots, too. Warm, I'll bet. Not like these buggers. He should be brown bread him. Like I said, he's not alone. It's a bit spooky, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> it's not the ghosts you need to be worrying about, my friend. Just the axe-wielding maniac. <laughs> I better get inside. <sighs> How nice of you to call. I was beginning to think that you were trying to avoid me. I didn't. I'm sorry. I'm sure you are, dear boy. I'm sure you are. I look forward to hearing all about it when you get here. I'm sure you have a perfectly reasonable explanation as to why Mr. Barnabas failed to receive the case he was expecting three days ago. Frank Hardy. He tried. He's gonna kill me. Frank Hardy knows the meaning of loyalty, Mr. Wainwright. He'll do as I tell him to. Now, be a good boy and let me speak to Frank. <laughs> she just stared at me. never said a word. I wanted to stop her, stroke her face, but I couldn't. So she left. And that, is this, is that. Did he last stay? Don't get too excited. The girl, Beth, is trying to talk some sense into her old man. Maybe tonight, if we're lucky, but this isn't a long-term solution. That guy frightens me. I, I won't lie. Religious nutters have got us into this mess in the first place. Terry and Steve. Who knows? <laughs>